Hello, Angie Gerber here, and welcome to my podcast, Awareness. Once you know, you can't unknow. A place you can come to start thinking and shifting your thoughts to finally create the results you truly, truly desire. It'll shift your mindset and give you strategies to get out there and get it done. Let's get started. All right, welcome to week two of Go Get Your Goals, a 90-day sprint to get from where you are to where you want to be. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get started right away. Now, if you're listening on YouTube, you'll be able to see the screen. If you're listening in on my podcast, uh, you can definitely catch the video on my YouTube channel or just keep listening because it will be just as impactful uh, for you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get in presentation mode. Let's see here. And today, what we're going to be talking about and going over is actually the knowing doing gap. So it really has to do with, you know what to do, and yet you're not doing it. So why? Uh, and what we like to talk about with that is really looking at, you know, how you're showing up and why you're showing up that way. I know for so many years, I would start, stop, start, stop, or I'd get really, really excited about a new goal that I was going to go after. And all I wanted to do was just go after my goal. And I was jazzed up, ready to go. And within a week or two, I had lost all enthusiasm, all motivation, and I was just kind of stuck. So with that said, I'm grateful you're here today because really you could either have a fixed mindset or growth mindset. And you being here today, or if you're listening to the replay, you're putting in the time, your forward growth mindset, which kudos to you because we're spiritual beings having a human experience and we're meant for expansion. If you're not expanding, you're contracting or dying. And really, the 1% better every day and going after ourselves as our biggest competition and just going after it and doing better, know better, do better, every day will get you to your goals. And tuning in to the Go Get Your Goals, listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, reading books, all of it, if you can choose one thing each month that will help you with your mindset and grow uh, in a personal development area, you can be in a completely different place within just a few months. I know that was the key for me, and that's how it works. So looking here, you know, change your mindset and the results will follow. Now, mindset to me is kind of an overused buzzword in the personal development industry in general. Um, what I've come to know it as is mindset is really kind of your awareness, you know, how you show up and how you uh, see the world or see yourself or others, what lens you're looking through. So it really is a compilation of a lot of things. But for the sake of it, we just kind of use the word mindset because that's what so many people know and attribute to personal development and bettering yourself. Uh, so I encourage you to even think about what that means to you and what, you know, what, what areas of your mindset you want to really dive into and become more aware um, how you're looking at others and through what lens and the world in general. Last week, we talked about goals and goal setting. So if you haven't watched the first week, week one, again, it's on my podcast awareness. Once you know, you can't unknow on all platforms, our YouTube channel, you can look up Angie Gerber or AG Coaching on this week one, go get your goals. Uh, so I think it's very important. It's a lot of the basis of what we'll be doing over the next few months. Uh, and it's just important to have that as a generalization and an understanding of goal setting, probably like you've never heard it before. Uh, so definitely take a look at that. It will give you a good basis. But again, you can also start here because each individual week 
will be in itself something that you could write books about. So you're going to find so much value in each week, regardless of where you start um, or where you jump in at or what you have or haven't listened to. You don't have to le listen to them in session. However, you know, it's just helpful um, always to start with the goals because that's the basis of this is what is your goal? What do you want to go after in the next 90 days and really sprint to your goal and end the year strong? Paradigms, that is what we're going to look at today. Again, the knowing doing gap is what I learned this as. That means you know what to do, and yet you're not doing it. You just can't muster up you know, all the excuses, all the reasons, your habitual behaviors, all of that will creep in and keep you stuck or safe. Uh, so really think about a paradigm. It's a mental program that has almost exclusive control over our habitual behavior. And almost all of our behavior is habitual. Like 95% of what we do is just from our subconscious. It's just a program that's ran. I mean, think about how you get up in the morning. Do you have your same routine? Do you drive the same way to work every day? You know, do you get to work and even wonder how you got there? I know a lot of times when I'm driving, all of a sudden I'll be like, oh my gosh, I blacked out for like a minute or two. That's your subconscious taking over because you do these things so repetitively over and over and over again. Your conscious subconscious mind just knows what to do because you've impressed upon it through repetition what to do. So think about that. Think about when you're, as we would call it, on autopilot throughout the day. And sometimes that can be a good thing. But as you'll find going through today's lesson, in a lot of ways, it's really a hindrance and holding you back. So take a moment and just think about that. If you need to pause this, just pause it and really reflect on your habitual behavior. And you know, a lot of people, they're not even really thinking. They just get up and do what they do because that's what they've been told to do. And that's what they've always done. And so that's that's it. And it's just really, it's a kind of a vicious, never-ending circle. And it doesn't have to be that way. And I'm a perfect example of just that. I never knew I could be where I'm at today or have the life I have. It was never even on my radar until I found this information and it completely shifted my awareness and opened up literally a whole new universe to me. So with paradigms, we want to bring in uh, the subconscious mind and the conscious mind and Bob Proctor, who was one of my first mentors and coaches met, uh, found this stick person. And this was the one thing that shifted everything for him because we're visual. We like to see visual, visual things. And he, he just couldn't quite understand the concept. He spent nine years trying to figure out why he had changed and did all the seminars and the, the research and the books and talked to the people and went to the events and all of that. And it wasn't until someone sat down in front of him and drew out the stick person that it all clicked and made sense. So you have your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, your physical body, which you take action, your results. And if you've been on any of my calls before, I always talk about if you don't like your results, maybe it's the relationship you're in or the job you have or your bank account, um, if you don't like those results, you back it up. It's because you're taking action or not taking action. And you're taking action or not taking action in your body because of how you're feeling, which is your subconscious mind, your feeling mind, which we'll get into more. And you're feeling the way you're feeling because of your thoughts. And you have your thoughts because of your habits or your beliefs. So it all stems from beliefs that were instilled in you very, very long time ago. Many of us in our 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s are making decisions based upon what was instilled and impressed upon us at a very, very young age. 
And it just is what it is. And we've accepted it. And it's a gift. This information is a gift because you will now know and understand that you don't have to accept it. There is a way to switch out what no longer serves you for what does serve you. And it's amazing. When you get this, you test it, you live it, and it works. Uh, that's my story. I could go on and on and on. But think about this. So your conscious mind, that is your thinking mind. That's your educated mind. We go to school, you read books, you cram, you take a test, you pass, you prove. You can gather knowledge. You can remember knowledge. You can get tested on knowledge. You might get a degree. You might figure it out. Uh, so the educated mind is where you gather. You gather information. You gather information. Uh, you can accept or reject information here in your conscious mind. So that's where politics, let's just put it out there. You either accept this or you reject it. This is for me. This isn't for me. When you hear something, uh, when you're told something, you know, the, the environment that you're in, maybe it's a friend tells you something or speaks something over you and it just doesn't feel right. And you're like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. That's that's not going to be an experience that I want. Or it, it just excites you. And you're like, oh my gosh, yes, that's for me. Then you accept it. You know, that's your conscious mind. Now, the subconscious mind is very different. The subconscious mind is your emotional mind. Now, the subconscious mind cannot reject. It only accepts what you, through your conscious mind, continually think, continually do, continually surround yourself with. It just accepts that uh, through the repetition and over and over and over again. So, you know, think about, I know Bob gives a good example of um, many welfare recipients. They're second, third, fourth, fifth generations, because that is what they've accepted. You know, you think about people that have had, you know, traumatic experiences in their family um, or health issues. I know people in my immediate family um, who's, you know, their ancestors had diabetes, heart issues, all the things, and they've accepted that as their faith. And because they accepted that as their faith, they're living it out in their results. So this is a very powerful thing to sit on and really understand that your results right now, if you work it backwards, are exact reflection of the past number one of your thinking, of your beliefs and your habitual behaviors and what you're allowing in through repetition to your subconscious mind through your thinking mind. I encourage you to watch this one a couple of times if this is a new concept to you, because there's a lot to unpack here. So we have our five senses. This is all I ever learned in kindergarten, first grade. Hear, see, smell, taste, touch, your five senses. Well, the truth is, is those five senses are here and they're meant for us to enjoy the world. You hear beautiful music, you see gorgeous sunsets, you smell that food or maybe fresh cut grass, you can touch the fuzzy blanket or pet your dog, you know, and you taste the cuisine and just the way your taste buds can explode when you have that amazing meal. Um, it's meant for you to just enjoy the sensory of everything around you. Um, if you're anything like me, you never were taught in school your higher faculties, which is your imagination, intuition, memory, will, and perception. Think about that. So you have these higher faculties that you can tap into. You can flex those muscles. You can really start learning and understanding how the top one to three percent when you hear the word visualization or positive affirmations and all these things that they do because they switch out their thinking, how what you think and believe will actually become your results. So if you don't like your results, you start thinking differently 
You switch all your beliefs and your paradigms with what will serve you. And you can do that through using your higher faculties, which we will get into a lot more in depth in the weeks to come. There's a whole lesson and a whole week on just your higher faculties that we'll go through. So your thinking mind, you can accept and reject and you can originate ideas. You have ideas, you have thoughts, things come to you. This is in your conscious mind. Now, the thoughts you can impress upon your emotional or subconscious mind. It works in feelings. It must accept all information that you continually impress upon it through emotion, through repetition, through affirmations, through doing the same thing over and over again, hearing the same thing over and over again. You just accept it. Think about our name. You were born, I was born Angie. How many times did I have to hear my name before I understood it was me they were calling? Now I've accepted it many, many years ago. I hear my name and I'm just like, okay, I'm here, I'm that. <laughs> when I became a mom, <laughs> you hear mom enough. Now you look when anyone calls mom. But in the beginning, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a mom. How did this happen? It's all new to you. But through the repetition, you're trained. So in doing that, in the doing part of our personality, and when you're impressing upon your subconscious, that's where you get into action or not action. So it controls the action and the behavior part of our personality. So how you're feeling will give you action or not act, take action. And that will be where you get your results. So again, re-listen to this if you have to and understand. I never again heard any of this. I had never heard of higher faculties. I had maybe heard of conscious mind or subconscious mind. If I did, I didn't give it any type of a you know second thought. I didn't understand how my environment was shaping me. You know, you always hear that you're the sum of the five people you hang around with the most. Uh, and it is so true. It is so true. Your environment is more important than your hereditary or genetics because you are born with genes. Obviously, that's why we kind of look like our family. Uh, we pick up on the same traits. I'll go through my day and I'll do something or I'll make a noise and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I am my mom. <laughs> you know, you'll have those moments where it's just like, because that's what you grew up knowing. And that's what was instilled in you through genetics and it comes from generations and generations and generations ago. So when you're going in here and you're thinking about when you're a baby, and I know I mentioned this already, but I want to really talk about this. When you're a baby, your subconscious is wide open. All you're doing is your receptor. You're just receiving in all the information for the first one to three to five years of your life. You don't really reject anything. You don't really know how to reject anything yet for the most part. So everything that's going around, around you, in your environment, the people, how they're speaking, what they're eating, it's all dropping into your subconscious and creating your beliefs, creating your behaviors, creating Again, where you're going to make 95% of your day-to-day -day is ran off of your subconscious, your behaviors, and your beliefs that were placed there, most, most of them, by the time you were seven to nine years old. If you were born as a baby and you're born in Minnesota, I grew up in Minnesota, you might hear my Minnesota accent. Um, if you had shipped me off to Beijing, I would know a different language. I would eat a different food. I would have grown up with a different culture. I would probably grow up with a different religion. And that would be a completely different person than I am today, just based solely upon my environment. And that is where environment is so, so, so true. You do have some genetic conditioning, absolutely. Uh, but think about that. You don't have a choice. When you're a baby, when you're one, when you're three, you are fully, almost solely dependent on the others around you. 
And that's where so many people continue to live from. And you don't have to. And I, once I figured this out, it was just like this aha breakthrough moment. And it's life-changing. When you can start deciding and making different decisions, deciding you're going to do different behaviors or have different habits or beliefs and impress those through repetition over and over on your subconscious, your subconscious will release what no longer serves you and take on what you want, what you truly, truly want out of life. And this completely changed everything for me. My whole life shifted when I really, really studied and understood this and applied it. Everything can change for you if you do the work. Simple, not easy. Easy, not simple. However you want to look at it. But it is. It is work. It is awareness. It is making the decision that this is something you want to do and committing to it, knowing that your paradigms are going to fight you every single day. Your mind, your brain is wired to keep you safe. It doesn't want change. It wants to keep you safe, even if safe and comfortable is not good. You're not in the job you want. You're not happy. Your bank accounts drain. However, you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again because that's all you know. And you would rather stay in the fear of changing instead of taking the faith and taking a jump towards faith of what you actually want. 90, 85 to 90% of the human population stays stuck because at least they know what to expect. It's not what they want, but they know what to expect. And they'll try to make a change. And just as quickly as you try to make a change within minutes, if not days, you'll be back to where you were before because the paradigms, the reasons, the excuses, oh, you don't need that vacation or who are you to think you deserve that? Or it was fine for your parents. It's fine for you. You know, and all these reasons of why we don't need it or we shouldn't have it or who are we will creep in and keep you exactly where you are. So that's where going back to mindset, going back to personal development and growth, the more you study you, the more you'll understand why not only you, but others behave the way they do. You have to understand and you need to know what you don't yet know. It is a gift and it opens up a whole new universe. Trust me, it did for me at age 40. A whole new universe was open to me that I had never, ever even imagined or thought of. All right, it was like a whole new universe. I'll leave it at that. So then think about 90% of your day is ran by your habitual behaviors or these beliefs or these, these things that were in your environment when you were a baby that were impressed in your subconscious, because at that time it was wide open, you received and you accepted everything that was thrown into it. And habits express them themselves in our behavior without any co co conscious thought. So you just go through your day because you go through your day because that's what you've always done. You know, for permanent improvement in your results, the paradigms that you have right now you must be changed. They must be switched out and changed to the paradigms that will create the habits and the desire and the results you want. And once you switch one out, you won't go back. But know this, another one will pop up. Take care of that one. Another one will pop up. This is something that you will, if you choose to go down this path, you will I don't even know if it's battle or fight, but you will become aware and ultra aware that every day you are going up against these old paradigms, these behaviors, these habits, because there are so many. So you start with the ones that are going to make the biggest impact or start with the little one, whatever you want, but just 1% better every day, knowing that you will get from where you are to where you want to be. Another thing I I uh, learned that I didn't know is that most of your body, the cells are regenerating every 11 months. Besides some of the very main organs in your body, you have a new 
body. Like your cells have memory. So if you start thinking different and if you start impressing different on your subconscious, you can be in a completely different place within a year. Look at people that have switched their health around, have switched their diet around, have gone like I was. I was failing hard. I was at my rock bottom, not knowing how I was going to do life sober. And within months of getting this information and understanding it, I was in a completely different place. I quantum leaped every single year after year after year. I set these goals, no idea how I was going to get them, which again, go back and listen to the goal, the goal week from last week. And yet it happened. It happens because you don't have to accept where you are right now. If it is not vibrationally and energetically where you want to be, it can be different. It's a process in a system that we will go through and learn together over these next weeks. And I will pause right here and let you know, self-plug, I do work one-on-one -on -one with clients as well, our small groups to really dive in and get you from where you are to where you want to be much quicker. See, you can take the long route and do this yourself and stumble and try to figure it out, or you can hire a coach, a great coach like me to get you from where you are to where you want to be in a very short amount of time. It switched and changed everything for me in the beginning. Now, next, I want you to start asking why. Why? Why am I doing this? Is this true? Is this my truth or someone else's? You know, when you say something or you're doing something, you know, is it just the way it is because that's the way it has to be? Or are you pleasing people? I remember when my husband and I started having kids. We ran from this place to that place to this place on Thanksgiving or Christmas just because we had to make everyone happy. And that's what you do because they have to see these grandparents and they have to see those grandparents. And well, this is going on. And it's just all about, does it have to be that way? No, you can make the own decision for yourself of what you want it to look like. Uh, ask why you're doing things that you're doing and where that exactly comes from. If you trace it back, most of the time you won't even know. And it just always has been that way because, again, that's what you accepted because you couldn't do any different when you were a baby and your subconscious was wide, wide open. So just become aware. Start thinking. Most people think they think, but no one's really thinking at all. They go through the day doing what they do because that's what they think they should do. They're not actually thinking about what they want to do or how to do it differently or what this could look like. That's a lot of work and it's beautiful work if you do it. Uh, you can have anything you want, uh, but most people, they're not willing to do the work. So it's a good place to start and a good place to think, think about you know, especially with triggers as I'm triggered throughout the day and I feel myself, you know, reacting versus responding, I just take a moment. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> like what just happened? So just start being aware. And when you do flip the switch or maybe fly off the handle or say something or just like act out, just be like, whoa, where did that come from? And you'll start seeing people in your life differently based upon their paradigms and their habitual behaviors and why they do what they do. And again, the more you understand yourself, the more you'll be able to understand the people around you better and why, why we show up the way we do. Thermostat. So think about this. Often, our self-image, we will never outperform. So your results right now are a direct reflection of your past thinking and your self-image, what you feel about yourself, what your worthiness is, what you think you deserve or don't deserve. So we have to, by switching out our paradigms and our habitual behaviors, your self-image is something that you're going to really want to work on. And that's through your higher faculties and really understanding yourself. Because just like a thermostat, 
or the rocket failing on its way to the moon, it's always failing, it's self-correcting the whole way. A thermostat in Minnesota, you have your inside heat setting to 68, you open a door, leave it open in winter and the temperature drops, that furnace is gonna kick in and it's gonna bring you right back up to where you should be at 68 degrees. And that's what happens to us all day, every day. You wanna make a change, you want better, but if you haven't gone in and done the internal work and switched out what no longer serves you for what will serve you and understand this information and understand this process and how this works, you will just start, stop, start, stop, go down, go up, go down, go up, go down, go up. But you'll always end up right where your self-image is. So the only way to get from where you are to where you want to be is work on your self-image and these paradigms and these habitual behaviors and switching them out. Because right now your thermostat is set at all of your subconscious, your feelings, what you've accepted. That is the results. That's giving you your results. That's where you get into action or you don't take action. It's all from your subconscious. So if your results are not what they want. You need to go back and you need to switch out because you are programmed right now to get what you're getting. If you want different, you need to reprogram yourself. And the beautiful thing is there's a process to it. So the paradigm, it's the stories, the symbols in your life, maybe power struggles that you've been through. If you're in an organization, organizations, whether it be a business, uh, a religious affiliation, uh, your family organization, they have their structures, they have their beliefs, they have their behaviors and their habits, control systems, routines and your rituals. And why are you doing what you're doing? Is it you? Is it your decision? Or is it something that you've just always done? And that's why you do it. And think about the stories you're telling yourself. Another thing I want to touch base on is that your subconscious is always working. It never sleeps. That's why people talk about not being on screens right before bed or going into gratitude or you know, giving your subconscious something that you want it to solve overnight and being really aware of what you're thinking about right before you go to bed because your subconscious is the most open right before you fall asleep and when you wake up. And throughout the day, we talk about thoughts and words matter. If you're telling yourself, I can't do this, who do I think I am? I'm ugly, or I can't believe this, or I'm so fat, or this or that. That's what your subconscious is hearing. So you're going to get more of it. I talk to a lot of my clients that have, you know, debt issues are like, oh my gosh, I'm just so in debt, this, that, debt, that, debt, this, debt, that, debt. Well, your subconscious hears debt, 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 debt. It's giving you more debt. So what you want to do is set a repayment program, put that on autopilot and focus on prosperity, 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 come from a different angle. And what you're thinking now, and when you think new things, People, money, opportunities will be put in your path. But if you keep thinking the same way you're thinking, saying the same mostly awful things to yourself, we have about 60,000 thoughts on average and up to 80% are negative. Like watch your thoughts, watch what you're saying, watch what you're thinking and stop it. Or at least just switch out a couple of them a day. And you can be in a completely different place but in a year. If you just look at getting 1% better every day, you will need a telescope to look back and see who you were today in a year from now. You have to make the decision. It's something that you are going to do and know that if you do falter, that's okay. If you go like I, I know in the beginning, I would go maybe a day or two and be like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. Okay, start over day one. Go back to it, go back to it, go back to it. And the time where you get off track, it will shorten. And all of a sudden, it will 
it will become, you'll catch it right away. But it takes work and it's work worth, worth doing. If you want to get to be one of the top one, three, five percent, they'll tell you it's not hard to get there. Well, it's hard to get there because no one's willing to do the work is why I say it's not. If you do the work and if you show up consistently and if you make the decision that this is what you're doing no matter what, you'll be in the top percent because 80 to 90 percent of people aren't willing or they let their habitual behaviors and their paradigms and their beliefs hold them back. You just have to understand the process and commit to it and you can have whatever it is you want. So the paradigm shift, what paradigm are you going to shift out today? Think about it. Pick one and just really look at impressing upon what you do want to remove what you don't want anymore. For me, I'm struggling with working out. My alarm goes off. I make up every reason not to get up and work out. Just do it because I'll fight it probably every day. I don't think I'm ever, you know, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm never going to like it. Uh, but for me, it's going to be a struggle for a while until I really, it becomes part of me. And it's one that's going to be really hard for me to break. Uh, you just make the decision and you do it whether you feel like it. You do it whether you're sore. You do it because you do it. Because every time I don't do it, my self-image takes a hit. So first and foremost, you have to take keep the promises to yourself and decide. Know better, do better. And awareness and repetition are key. So being aware and through the repetition of the positive affirmations, saying what you do want, uh, focusing on different behaviors one at a time, knock these old paradigms out and shift it into what you do want. And it's through the, the repetition of impressing it through your conscious mind to your subconscious mind, thinking differently. Surround yourself. If you, I stopped watching the news years ago. Best thing I ever did. Start watching a YouTube video that's going to expand you, not contract you. Read a book that's going to expand you, not contract you. If the people you're hanging around with are going nowhere and you want to go somewhere, don't go as often and don't stay as long. Find new people. And we are in the best day and age. You have podcasts for free. You have YouTube videos for free. You can tap into almost anyone that has done anything of significance. You have it at your fingertips. Go find it. Surround yourself, if not physically, mentally or screen-wise with stuff that is going to get you from where you are to where you want to be, give you tools, resources, a different way of thinking. And the truth is, if anyone has done what you intend to do, there's no reason why you can't. You are your only problem and your only solution. If they can do it, there's no reason why you can't. If it is a true desire of yours and something you want bad enough. And there's a process to get it. I love this stuff. It's so great. Go back, listen to this. If you're not seeing it, go to my YouTube channel, watch the video, see the diagrams. It's really important to start understanding your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, how your results come about. And if you don't like your results, how you can shift it out. And as I said, this is something I'm showing up and doing. If you want to contribute, this is a pay what you want, when you want, if you want, not required. However, if you feel feel the need and, and desire and if I've touched you or you've learned something, you know, feel free, feel free. Absolutely. And if you don't have Venmo, email me if you'd like an invoice or a Stripe payment. I'm happy to do that as well. Uh, but again, you'll never out give a giver. I'm here giving the $7,000 program away for the next three months. Uh, so do with it as you will. I'm possible. So if you take, you feel like it's impossible right now that you're not understanding this, or it might be a little far-fetched if this is the first thing uh, first time you've heard this, some people call it woo-woo, uh, know that I was there. I did not believe this in the beginning. I did not understand it, um, but I was in a place where I had to be in order to receive it at a rock bottom where I didn't really have another option. 
Um, not many people, all people have to be there, uh, but just know that this has been received by people at all various levels of life, uh, levels of success. And it's really, if you just take my belief in you, my belief in the process and have an open mind and just start playing around with it and start seeing almost instantly how your energy will shift, how you'll shift to a different um, vibration through your frequency, everything will start shifting. And it's amazing. So play with it again. If you want to look at doing this one-on-one -on -one or any support or any questions, leave them in the comments or feel free to reach out to me, Angie Gerber at gmail.com. And I thank you so much for being here. I mean, this has been a true, true pleasure. Week two. I love this. I think everyone can tell how much I love this. This absolutely changed my life. I will be back here for week three. Stay tuned. Watch these lessons over and over. Or listen to them. Because again, it's through the repetition that you will get from where you are to where you want to be and start shifting out what no longer serves you and putting in what will. So. Until next time, make it a good one and go get your goals. Thanks for spending some time with me today. And if you like what you heard, feel free to share, like, subscribe, follow, do whatever it is you do. I'd love to get this out to as many people as possible because it truly all does start with awareness. Once you know, you cannot unknow, and it changes everything. And of course, if I can help in any way, I'm here and happy to do so. Until next time, make it a good one.